Hello and welcome to Colleague 7 Sprint Review for 18.09.01. This will cover the work undertaken between the 4th of September to the 17th of September. Starting with our sprint goal and in continuation with our theme on performance improvement, in this sprint we've refined the quick search and notifications within Colleague 7 so that these are optimised to improve performance. Looking at the high level items and to explain further, in this sprint, we've continued with our development of the background service by adding notifications as standard. Previously, notifications and the process which checks for new notifications has been triggered on login and whenever you're navigating around the system. This process would often take a couple of seconds to run, and by making this part of the background service, it will no longer be requested of the front end, which in turn will improve performance. The quick search, which runs across all entities, has been refined for optimal performance. We've also added a number of additional fields which are checked by the quick search and I'll go through these shortly. We've updated the attached document workflow so that only attaches selected documents when they're being processed from the documents received area. This section also got a bit of a redesign which again I'll go through shortly. We've updated the error handling on search so that it deals with timeouts better. We've also introduced a timeout setting so that you're able to determine your, um, yourself the appropriate number of seconds before the searching request times out. We have fixed an issue when deleting parent codes, uh, so child codes are not orphaned. We've introduced a setting which dictates the ordering of documents in the documents area. Currently the ordering can be obscure, but there is now a global and user setting option to sort by dates uploaded, date amended and alphabetical. We've updated the user overview area, so the KPI dial labels have a tooltip. This will mean that users are able to give a brief overview on the criteria before the dial is, if it's unclear. And as a minor point, we've added a global setting for the SMS text to reply tick box. So this is a user and global setting. We'll now go for a brief demonstration on the key features from this sprint. Okay, so the first point to cover relates to the quick search and specifically the work that was done to the quick search to um, optimize it, to, to essentially improve the speed in which it would bring back results. Uh, the quick search has been there from the outset um, in terms of its um, option there to search against uh, all entities for a singular phrase, um, but the um, speed in which it performed that search um, wasn't ideal. Um, it, there were ways in which we could optimize it to, to make it run faster, um, run against an index and um, essentially bring back the results um, at, at, at better speed. So um, that's the work that's basically been undertaken as part of this sprint. Um, you should now find that the results are coming back um, faster than they have done previously. Um, and uh, the uh, fields that you were able to search against um, have also been um, up updated as well and, and, and added to. So um, it's now possible, for example, to search against an email address. It's possible to uh, search against uh, an ID. It's possible to search against um, all phone numbers. Um, to give, give you the full list of um, fields, this is taken from the uh, release notes um, of this build, but the, uh, the list of fields that you have here against Canada is ID, full name, surname, full name, known as all phone numbers, all email addresses, address and preferred job title. Uh, for companies, ID and name. For contact, you have ID, full names, surname, full name, known as job title, all phone numbers, all email addresses and address. And for requirement, interview and placement, it's ID and job title. Um, so so that those are the fields that they're going to be checking when you're using that uh, quick search option for that phrase. Um, and that just gives you more options in terms of what you could bring back. Um, and uh, as I say, the speed in which uh, the data is found is now uh, refined and a lot faster than it's ever been before. So um, that's the update that we made as part of this sprint. Just a couple of minor UI updates that are also made as well. Um, on the overview section of the homepage, uh, where you've got uh, the dials essentially that are user specific, um, what we've introduced is a tooltip option against the dial label. Um, so the KPI dial in terms of the number that's obviously being displayed to you, um, what you've got now is the ability for there to be a tooltip, which offers a sort of brief summary on, on what's the criteria behind um, that value being displayed. And it's just obviously to help users understand um, what, what the system is actually checking uh, when it presents that figure to you. Um, so those have been introduced um, for clients that have uh, bespoke KPI dials. Um, we can 
go about adding and updating the text um, of those bespoke dials to include um, tooltips um, within this area um, for all, all users that have the sort of bespoke KPI dials in place. Obviously, um, they are they are this can be shipped as standard moving forward. Um, that's the update we've made with regards to the dials on the um, SMS front. Um, when uh, launching uh, or, or triggering SMS to be sent, the allow recipients to reply tick box. Um, what we've done is we've made that a user setting. Uh, so in user settings now, um, you've got an option here when creating SMS, default the allow recipients to on, and you can set that to, to yes or no. Um, and that obviously will specify whether or not that tip flag um, is set by default. Um, so that's just um, two sort of minor uh, UI updates we made there. Next point to cover just relates to the documents received area and specifically attaching a, a document that you've received um, fr from an email. So um, in this scenario, we would have an email that come through. Um, it contains some attachments that we want to attach to a record, and then we select attach documents to records. Um, on selecting um, this area, you'll notice that it's been um, redesigned somewhat. So on the left-hand side, you've got um, basically all the records that you're you've been found by it uh, attempting to automatically um, show a record associated to the sender's email address so these are all email addresses or these are all records that have the email address associated to the email um, uh, within those records you also have the option to to manually uh, search to include other 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 um, uh, other other records as well if you wanted to uh, bring others into the mix there um, but um, yeah essentially we've got uh, now a good overview of of um, records that either associated to the email address and also have this manual lookup. Um, on the right hand side, we've got the list of um, documents um, and previously it would attach all documents associated to the email. Now you can select whether to attach uh, one or the other based on, on, on which option you tick. Um, and obviously um, the, the selected um, attachment is going to appear down here and we'll default the description to be the, the um, essentially the attachment name there as well. Um, so uh, there's a couple of updates there in terms of it, the UI layout. It's hopefully it's a little bit cleaner on the eye to look at um, and should help in terms of the speed of, of its use as well. Um, so you can select um, a, a, a candidate contact uh, a company based on what it selects there and just hit OK. Um, and then once you've done that, it will give you the option to go to the record um, that or the records that you attach that those uh, documents to um, as an option there. So that's the update we made there. Next point to cover is twofold. Uh, one, we've implemented a better error handling within the search area. Um, so in the event of a timeout, um, there is a an alert which is which is displayed in an option to retry the search rather than the previous error that would occur. Um, also, what we've implemented is an option as a search setting within admin to stipulate the number of seconds that you allow for a search to uh, attempt to process uh, the criteria that you've entered uh, before that timeout kicks in. Um, so just to help demonstrate this, if I go to admin uh, and go to search settings, um, what you'll see now is an option within this area for displaying um, the number of seconds elapsed before the timeout error uh, will occur. So uh, its default is 45, but if we change this, say, to uh, one second, just as an extreme example, um, and if I go back to here and just refresh um, this page, then if I run a search, um, and if, if I run a radius search, um, as an example of the type of search that might take a, a little while to run through, on processing that search, because a second has elapsed, what you'll see here is an, an error has occurred whilst retrieving the search count. Click retry to attempt again. Um, and if you fr frequently experience that problem, contact support, because if there's an issue with the search uh, taking longer than a certain amount of time, um, obviously there's work that needs to be done to uh, either refine the data or, or apply indexes to assist with that. Um, so obviously with the search setting being at uh, uh, one second, that's not really giving it a chance. Um, you can choose what your own setting would be in terms of uh, the time to, to give that that search, um, our, our uh, limit on that would be 120 seconds, anything more than um, uh, two minutes. But realistically, anything more than uh, 30, 30 to 45 seconds is is uh, into the realms of, of unacceptable. Um, so, uh, yeah, essentially that's that's been added there as an option just to give you a bit of configuration and a bit of uh, a bit of functionality and offering. Uh, but the key element here is that um, in the event of a timeout, uh, the error is handled better. 
Um, so that's um, essentially the component that we've done uh, within this sprint. The last point to cover is just on reports. Um, report, the reports area is um, an element of the system that we uh, continue to uh, need to build on and refine. Um, so at, at present, we have a set of reports and we've just been building on those, adding them um, consistently over the course of um, the last six months um, and we'll continue to do so. Um, but what has happened over the course of this sprint um, is we have the addition of a, a company activity report um, uh, previously referred to as the account summary report, but essentially it allows you to um, achieve an, an overview um, in terms of the um, activity that you've had with a company over a certain date range. Um, so if I put in uh, an excessively uh, long date range, but just to ensure that we bring back uh, the required data, you enter in uh, your company ID, um, enter in uh, the date range, um, we run the report, um, and then the uh, report output will come back. Uh, just with an overview of information about uh, what you've done uh, with that company in that time. So you have a, a just a feel for um, what your activity has been in within that date range in terms of requirements, placements, um, and, and activity in terms of requirement workflow. Um, you've got an, an overview of items outside of that date range. We obviously did quite a vast date range, but if it was a smaller date range, you'd have an overview of things that have happened outside of that. You've got some conversion matrix there uh, in, in terms of CVs per new requirement, CVs per interview, um, and so on. Um, and then if we scroll through the report, um, you'll be able to see that um, it offers just an overview in terms of the uh, specific placements that have happened um, in that time period as well, uh, with links through to access those uh, report those um, requirements and also the placements as well. Uh, that have happened again with um, you know detail regarding what, what actually took place on those placements. Um, so that's the uh, company activity reports. Um, as mentioned, we've got uh, a number of different reports um, that we're working on currently, um, and uh, the idea is to try and offer you a suite of different reports. So we've got activity for company, we've got consultant requirement interview uh, placement checklist. Um, we've got some GDPR-based reporting, um, and there's more reporting to follow um, in this area. So um, I'll advise as and when uh, additional reports uh, are added, but you'll also be able to access these uh, from the reports area uh, on the navigation. Uh, and that's the update that was made in this sprint. As always, if you have any queries or feedback, please get in touch. I'll be keen to hear from you. Also, for those using Colleague 7, feel free to submit your enhancement requests via the support team or directly to me using the above email address. The next video will be the sprint plan for 18.09.02 and as always that will contain a high level overview on the items we intend to work on during that sprint. Thanks for watching.